phenotype for me. Okay, case number seven. This is a patient that had a spinal procedure years ago and since then has had unremitting headaches. Two postcatalinium T1 weighted images to your left a mid sagittal one and to your right a coronal image, okay? Ready? Okay, first question of the following. Which is not part of the imaging spectrum of the entity shown here? So you have to know what the diagnosis is. A, subdural fluid collections. B, a thickened enhancing dura. C, epidural fluid collections. D, several tonsillar herniations. And E, slumping of the midbrain. Let's start the countdown, please. I know, this is a tough question, guys. So let's see how many get it. It's also a favorite case of certain examinations. They put it in there. They like it a lot. Okay, let's see the answer. And everybody said, oh, great, great, great. Epidural fluid collections are not part of the spectrum of this. Okay, second question in this case. Which of the following may be responsible for the imaging findings shown? A, a previous lumbar puncture. B, a tarlow cyst. C, ventricular shunting. D, vigorous exercise or coughing. And E, all of the above. It's a trick on this one, I think. No. Oh, the audience likes that music. Okay, let's see the answer. And E, all of the above. So you guys are doing very, very well. I think I'm going to give you just a passing grade on the MOC. Okay, let's see what the diagnosis is. A, pseudotumor cerebri. B, intracranial hypotension. C, post-shunting slit ventricle syndrome. D, idiopathic packing meningitis. And E, a carry one malformation. Okay. <laughs> See? What is the diagnosis, guys? And they told me this case was too hard for you. Okay. This is the CT on the patient, and this is how the patient presented from the headache clinic. And when we saw the CT, we were a little bit concerned. You see effacement of the basilar cisterns, and we're thinking, well, maybe this patient had a sarcoma hemorrhage a few days ago, or maybe the patient has something like a meningitis, tuberculous meningitis, that we don't see uh, the basilar cisterns as well. But you saw on the MR uh, the findings that account for the findings on the CT. So I think that the diagnosis of intracranial hypotension on CT may be a little bit uh, tricky. Let's take a look at some information regarding intracranial hypotension. About half of the patients will demonstrate a sagging brain, uh, tonsillar herniation in anywhere from 25 to 75 percent of patients, subdural fluid collections in 15 percent of patients, and 85 percent of patients will have diffuse uh, thickening of the dura and enhancement of the dura. You can also have pronounced venous enhancement, uh, small lateral ventricles, and a thick spinal epidural space. We start imaging these patients with a brain MRI, and then we go ahead and image the spine. You can do an MR myelogram to see if you find a tarlow cyst. And if you don't find anything, many people recommend a radionuclide scan to image the patients on consecutive days. And most of these patients uh, will have symptoms that resolve uh, spontaneously, uh, uh, fortunately. So here are the findings in this case, the pronounced venous enhancement in this case, the slumping of the brain with lack of clear visualization of the third ventricle, kind of obliteration of the supracellular system, flattening of the ventral aspect of the pons, the fourth ventricle is not well seen. In this case, there is no significant herniation of the cervical tonsils, but we see other findings such as thick enhancing dura and enhancement of the epidural space within the spinal canal. So all findings typical for intracranial hypotension. Okay, let's go on to the next case. 